Hey, how about them Seahawks, huh? What a comeback win against Green Bay Packers last Sunday. If you don't follow football or have been living under a rock, follow this link to know what I'm talking about. In this video, I'm going to combine two of my passions, Seahawks football and Power BI. We are going to pull the play-by-play -play game data from the NFC Championship game and then analyze it using Power Pivot and then visualize it using the brand new Power BI dashboard in preview. But before that, I want you to meet two of the most diehard Seahawks fans who happen to live right in this household. What's up, baby? We're going to the Super Bowl! Say hi. Hi. All right, now let's talk about Power Pivot. I guess they're not that much into Power Pivot. I'll give them a few more years. Going back to the Seahawks win, Microsoft, in its long history, has had a few of those. Gosh, Microsoft Office came back from behind to win the game against Lotus. Bill Jelen recounts parts of that story in the article linked here. In the BI realm, Microsoft has been a strong contender, but recently seems to have been edged out by companies like Tableau or Click, at least as reported by Gartner in their BI Magic Quadrant. But Power BI from Microsoft could be a game changer. Now I'll admit, I've been sitting on the fence about this one as well. Although not perfect by any means, but Power BI has come a long way. The Power BI team has put in a lot of effort in the most recent release, and it looks quite promising. So let's take a look, starting with their data. So the data was a simple web scrape, and as you can see, it came on uh, in a very unstructured format. And uh, I threw the kitchen sink at it, I used Power Query, Excel, VBA, um, everything to kind of parse it out and uh, I grabbed you know so this is their down first down 10 yards to go at Green Bay 20 and then the play clock I also converted that to a, a kind of a, a stopwatch kind of clock so zero zero to 60 minutes and beyond the plan was to connect that to a time dimension uh, I wasn't able to do that yet then I grabbed the first player which is typically going to be the quarterback or the running back and then I grab the second player, which at least in pass plays is going to be the receiver. And then what happened with the play? Was it a pass? Was it a run? Something else? Sack? And then some detail. Or was the pass completed? Was it a touchdown? And so forth. And finally, how many yards? I also grabbed some ancillary information, kind of team, quarter, play number, etc. I pulled that all into my data model. Now there are uh, two lookup tables for players, player one, two. I grab that information from the player rosters, so you know I have their height, weight, so you can slice and dice data uh, based on that. But otherwise, it's a pretty flat table, and I do want to point out that that is certainly not the best practice. And uh, you can click on this article where I talk about why a star shape is ideal for Power Pivot, and you should you should aspire for that. But hey, this was done in less than two days, so uh, that's what it is. Uh, so we should parse out some of the tables from this, starting with the time dimension. And lastly, I did some measures. Uh, no rocket science. You would have the file so you can glance those. Uh, but certainly, gosh, looking at the NFL metrics, there's, there's a lot of potential to do some really interesting stuff. Uh, and certainly, Rob has done some really cool stuff, uh, the Great Football Project. I uh, certainly, through this effort, gained a lot of respect for folks who crunch uh, NFL data. Pretty impressive. And this was the result. I have a bunch of metrics where I'm comparing and contrasting Green Bay versus Seahawks uh, and a bunch of metrics uh, by quarter. And then I also had did the same one by uh, by down. So first down and second down. And of course, you know how Power Pivot works. Once you define the measure, it's defined once used everywhere. Uh, so you can slice and dice it by any of those fields that are available in there that you saw earlier in the model. Let's actually go to the file to take a look at it. All right, so here's my file with the model and let's uh, run down the game, see how it looks like in our metrics. And I have to warn you that these are not the official metrics. Uh, God forbid, don't try to use them that way. Uh, I tried my best to parse all the game play-by-play -play text, but it's not perfect by any means. All right, but still, it definitely represents the game, and uh, let's see what it shows. 
So look at play selection. Did they choose to pass or run? And Green Bay started off uh, favoring pass, but then they go 50-50 in the third quarter between pass and run, and then they seem to favor run. And that makes sense. They were leading, so they wanted to burn the clock, and run is the best way to do it. Uh, Seattle started off favoring pass, but gosh, that went that didn't go well. Uh, pretty disastrous. Uh, so they switched to run, and I think they had fair success with that. Uh, but then I think they came back to what seems to be the natural game, kind of a 60-40 pass run. It'll be interesting to see this kind of over uh, several games and over the season. Uh, plays, and you see this graph. This is pretty uh, classic for this game. You'll see this again and again for Seattle, kind of this upswing. Starts off bad, but then just keeps getting progressively better. Uh, and for Green Bay, you would see this. It starts great, but then kind of tapers off, comes back, but not quite good enough, as we saw, right? So you'll see that pattern again. Average yards to go. I'll point out this third quarter pass. Gosh, uh, Seattle certainly made things tough for themselves. They there were penalties, sacks, and so forth, and they were always fighting an uphill battle. And certainly they pulled off a miracle here. Total yards again. The classic graph that I talked about kind of starts off really crappy, but then it really picks up. And the same kind of graph for Green Bay starts great, but then mm. tapers off. Yards per play, gosh, hey, look at that, the overtime play, and look at that, that's the, the pass completion down below. Um, and yep, that play was special. In fact, that set off a bit of an earthquake uh, in at the Seahawks Stadium, which was picked up and measured by seismologists. Uh, so here, here's a picture for that. Interestingly, the, the loudest one, the biggest one, was not at this uh, fake play, uh, nor was it when we won the game. It was at the two-point conversion. Gosh, that thing is off the charts. Finally, the big plays. Gosh, I mean, there's there's a story there. I mean, Green Bay had some initially, but as for Seattle, if you add up the third, fourth quarter in overtime, 16 big plays of more than 10 yards, right? So phenomenal game. And here it is, kind of laid down in, in, in beautiful numbers. Now, let's take a look at the Power BI dashboard preview. This is currently only available to users in the United States. You can go to this URL uh, to sign up. Sign up right now is free. And here I am on the site, uh, logged in. And there's a sample up there to begin with to kind of demonstrate uh, what the capabilities some of the capabilities are but we're going to start by importing or uploading our excel workbook so i'm going to click on get data and there are a lot of options available here we're just going to stick with an excel workbook Our data set is uploaded here, and now we're ready to kind of explore the data just by clicking on it. And uh, we can save that exploration as reports, and we can also pin those to our dashboard, as is the case now. So let's start by exploring. You can click on these uh, three dots and choose one of these, or I'm just going to click on this, and it takes me. Now, this certainly reminds me of PowerView. Um, but not quite as good, but certainly with a lot of new and exciting features. So to contrast, look at PowerView. I certainly like the ribbon. A lot of us have gotten used to that interface through Office. So it has that, has that familiar feel. No ribbon here. And uh, there are a lot of other issues which I'm not going to get into. But hey, it's a preview, so I'm sure it'll get better over time. All right, so let's build our first sheet and then go on. And I'm going to focus on showing you some of the functionality that is new to this public preview, which has not existed in PowerView.
So let's look at this view. This is uh, a tree map. And uh, well, our model is not extremely sophisticated, but it had a player one, which was typically the, the quarterback or the running back, and player two, which was uh, typically the receiver in at least a pass play. Uh, so let's look at it team by team. So Green Bay, you can see it's heavily weighted toward Aaron Rodgers, 190 yards, Eddie Lacy, 73, uh, and, and then the others. And if you click on Rodgers, we can see his top receivers, Jordy Nelson, Randall Cobb. And we can switch that to Seattle. And it's a little more balanced between the quarterback and, and uh, running backs. And if you click on Wilson again, you can see uh, the receivers there. And there's Curse with that 35-yard uh, reception. Woohoo! So this is a gauge or a speedometer. Uh, I'm not a big fan of those, but I think it's it's been done well, as well as can be. Uh, the only problem is that it's not quite working right for me. Um, I'm using this to show compare Green Bay versus Seattle. And even though this one is at 56%, you notice it's about the same mark. And the max range of this goes to 112, whereas this one is as it should be to 100%. So I'm not sure what's going on. Again, preview, I'm sure these things will be sorted out by the time it clears uh, uh, general availability. So that is a combo chart, and you can see I have uh, the total yards as bars and the yards per place graph. And it's a pretty interesting contrast to look, uh, compare Green Bay versus Seattle. So Green Bay, uh, yards per play does go up. Oh, actually, you know what? Hold on. Let me add some filters in place. All right, that's much better. That makes a lot more sense. So yeah, as we saw earlier in the Excel, Green Bay has this trend with start off hot, taper off, and fourth quarter come back, but not quite good enough. And Seattle, on the other hand, looks very different. Oh gosh, that horrendous start, but then it's just reaching for the sky. Pretty cool. All right, now just for fun, I built a scatter chart uh, trying to show the correlation between the reception yards, which is somewhat kind of recorded in my model as player two. So that's what it's broken down by. And their height, which is on the x-axis, and weight, and the size of the bubble represents the yards. So this is for Green Bay. And you can see there's Randall Cobb, you know, Somewhat short, Jordy Nelson, a little bit taller, Rogers, and so forth. Let's look at Seattle. And here we have Doug Baldwin. Gosh, he's, he's short by NFL standards, I suppose. Uh, Marshall Lynch caught a few passes, and a few others. And my favorite, this is the one that caused an earthquake in Seattle. Uh, the trick play to Gilliam for 19 yards. So folks, that was the look at the NFC Championship game through the lens of Power BI. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, certainly as, as it comes to Power BI and the new release, the top question on everybody's minds is how does it fit in with the whole picture? Um, there is old Office releases 2010, 2013, Office 365, the upcoming Office 15, and of course, Power BI kind of strikes out on its own. There's a Power BI designer, which you can use completely independent of Office. You don't need Office at all. And I'm certain answers will be coming, but for now, it looks promising, and we can't wait to see more from Microsoft. Mm -hmm.